Good evening and welcome back to the show. This is Michael Cross here with the second half of Unlock the Radio here on UCY TV Productions. Anyway, before I begin, well, let's just say I gotta let you know what the topic is. It's gonna be fake news. No, this is not gonna be fake, okay? And nothing on my website is fake or a YouTube channel is fake. Um, by the way, if you're listening to this later on YouTube, click on those links up there uh, on the uh, video and uh, you know become a subscriber and keep up on new shows and also check out my writings on my official page. Now, the one thing I would like to say though about this whole fake news thing uh, that's really been taking off, um, I don't know, since the election. Now, my problem... My problem is this. It's, we, we see that the mainstream media is losing credibility and losing credibility very rapidly. We see that uh, before the election, now it doesn't matter whether you're a Trump supporter, not a Trump supporter, Hillary supporter, not Bernie, not whatever. The thing is, that the news media, many, many, many people were starting to see. They were starting to analyze. And they were coming to the understanding that there actually was an agenda behind much of the news they were listening to. And the, the thing is that, you know, it's sort of like when you take film literature class. And I, I personally think film lit should be a required class. Take away one of those English classes or literature classes that's required uh, in most high schools around the United States. Stick in a half a year of film literature because obviously people spend more time watching TV or movies than they do um, you know, reading books. But the thing is that these are platforms by which you need to learn how to analyze and be able to tell, you know, by camera angles, words used, costume design, all of these other things that, you know, you learn how to really see behind the, the making of a movie. And the thing is, these skills can be applied then to the media, to where you start noticing the words used, the words not used the kinds of um, guests that are brought on, the topics that are discussed. And, you know, as time goes on, you just start saying, wait a minute, this isn't the way it is. You know, you, you, go, to, you, you go to a you know, Hillary rally and you see 100 people and then you see the camera angles making it look like there's thousands. You see a Bernie rally or a Trump rally, uh, you go there and you see 50,000 people or something like that, either one of them. And then you see the way the camera angles are, they make it look like as if the Hillary and the Bernie or the Trump rallies had the same number of people. And sometimes, you know, you let one of the candidates speak, you let them have a sound bite, the other one, you tell the audience what they talked about. And you use words that, um, you know, you use words like if, if a politician that you don't like makes a statement that you don't like, then you could say his unsubstantiated claim rather than, you know, saying basically that um, he proposed. And then, you know, I mean, it's just the way you word things. But let's just talk, you know, you want to talk about fake news. I think the problem is that, yes, there there is fake news out there. And there are techniques by which you can learn, you know, how to tell fake and real news stories. Uh, most of the time, most of the time you can tell by the kinds of um, articles, uh, products they're advertising, um usually really wild claims that you're thinking if this was really true this would this would actually be picked up in even the uh mainstream media they could not ignore these kinds of things 
if it's being ignored and it sounds too good or too crazy to be true, it probably is, okay? I mean, that's just the way it is. Unless you know something about the site. Okay, if you if you have gone there, you've seen that they may be very opinionated or sensationalistic, but they generally report the truth, then you could trust them. But if it's just some link you see on Facebook, forget it, you know. And and you know, I saw fake stuff. Okay, I'll I'll say this much. I saw fake stuff on both sides. I saw, uh, you know, these statements that allegedly Donald Trump claimed that uh, if he was going to run for president, he'd run as a Democrat. I mean, a Republican, because Republicans are so stupid. Okay, that got shared and shared and shared and shared. There was also a story that I saw posted quite a bit. You know, I have a lot of liberal friends on my Facebook. And it said that it had been shown that the WikiLeaks mails and so forth, and this was in some credible publications, I mean, I'm credible in the fact that they were corporate media, that um, there was some pretty good evidence that they were doctored. Now, this is not true. Okay? That was, that was fake. That was false. And then, and then, on top of that, on top of that, and I'm going to go back and show some more history here. Okay? If you're going to talk about fake news, there's plenty of fake stuff out there just because, you know, you've got a giant corporation with billions of dollars behind it doesn't mean that it's always true. And the thing is that there was a um there was an article that was linked in uh one of the large newspapers and it was to this site that claimed claimed that there was all this evidence of Russian interference in the US Amer you know media the alternative media oh my gosh i saw weird stuff there you know i've interviewed paul craig roberts before uh he was a high up official in the uh reagan administration and he was listed on that page and he was also, you know, when it said, they had this really simplistic, is it a right-wing site or a left-wing site? He was listed as left-wing. Uh, I was just thinking, how in the world could you list someone who was high up in the Reagan administration as being left-wing? But they had they had really ripped into some left-wing um, alternative and right-wing alternative. They had this thing where it was, um, you know, it had like uh, one of the major alternative news sources and, and it had a picture there of, uh, you know, from that site. And then it had a picture of some Soviet propaganda. And it said, Soviet propaganda then and, you know, now. And essentially it looked like any time that you had some sort of alternative media, whether it was left-wing, right-wing, and it was even uh, questioning U.S. foreign policy, then it must be a Russian plot. Oh, my gosh, there's Russians hiding everywhere. I mean... There, I saw someone trip on the sidewalk uh, a couple days ago. Must have been the Russians. Uh, you know, my, you know, your your ice cream disappears in the refrigerator. You know, don't blame the kids. It was probably a Russian agent that ate it. Russians love ice cream. But the thing is, there was so many. Uns there was another thing. Uh, they had a, a oh, was vigilant citizen was listed, and I looked at that sometimes. You know, just for you know, get some. You know their their take on maybe a movie or something, and and the symbolism in there, and it's not it's not a political site really. You know what? Questioning Hollywood means that you're all of a sudden you know you're part of some sort of thing. You know where your you know you 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 um your patriotism is in question, but yet this was thrown out there, and then I saw I saw um other publications pick up on it. And, and give publicity to this site. And the the thing is that this is this is dangerous. Okay? If the if the if the corporate media is so scared of the alternative media, which can be anything from I don't know, uh, it could be Stefan Molyneux, you know, his take on things. 
Or it could be just someone who, you know, has a little podcast in their garage and maybe reaches 20 people. Okay? That's all alternative news. But the thing is, there's so many people doing it. And it's it's gaining in power where people are sharing more on social media. They see an article or they write an article. They share it on social media. And now there's all these calls for uh, clamping down. Oh, it's fake. But what's your definition of fake? Okay, I was talking to someone the other day. Now, I don't ever deal with this issue. Okay, the whole 9-11 thing. Um, I've never dealt with it. But I'll tell you, this was funny because this woman I was talking to, uh, she said something about fake news that should be banned. And I said, well, what do you mean by fake news? And she said, well, and she said, my brother, who's really intelligent and really educated, he believes that 9-11 was an inside job. And I said, okay, well, uh, is there anything wrong with that? I mean, that's his opinion. Well, yes, it is. That, that that kind of stuff should be banned. And I said, well, what if your brother set up a site, you know, and, and shared this? Well, it shouldn't be shared. And that's scary because I just thought, I just think whether you believe that it was inside job or, or it was Al-Qaeda or whatever, it should be debated. It should be discussed and let people come to their own conclusions. But, see, there's where we get into, you know, there's a lot of media out there that is speculative. A lot of alternative media is speculative. It will it will say, this could be, and I don't care whether you're talking about, you know, things dealing with conspiracies or, or whatever. It, it's still something that's not meant to be fake, okay? You're not lying, you're not trying to deceive people. And that should be the major thing there. And, and so the alternative media, all of a sudden, you know, much of it that is speculative, even though it's also giving information, you could get easily government agencies saying, no, no, that's fake. Ban it. And then they can put pressure on social media. Oh, ban it. Oh, they got an article about Russia and Putin, and it's a good article about Russia and Putin. Uh, ban it. You know, pretty soon we're we're in an era that would make McCarthy look like some sort of hippie. You know, on a, in a sitting in a free speech zone in front of a courthouse. Okay, that is dangerous. Now, if you want to talk fake news, let's talk about uh, such things as the um, oh. Let's see a good example here. Oh, well, we could talk about weapons of mass destruction in um, Iraq or government officials showing uh, underground city sort of um, military bases in Afghanistan and the media not saying, hey, do you have some proof of this? You know? I mean, it, the, the media... Is was promoting so many war things without questioning it, and it didn't. And you know, you'd think, well, they they learned since Iraq, they they're not going to fall for that one again. And then during the you know the whole thing in Libya, there was these stories of oh, Gaddafi is giving uh, uh, Viagra to his troops so that they'll be able to go through the cities and rape people. There was no evidence of it, but yet it still went out as true or it was written in such a way that the reader will believe it's true whether it says this is absolutely true or not now there's other instances where I think it's it's um, imperative that we resist this this big you know let's clamp down on the First Amendment you know Julian Assange warned about this just a few months ago, the whole thing about you know that that all of a sudden, if you're critical of U.S. foreign policy, maybe you uh, must you might be a Russian agent or something like that. I think he said it more in the context of Hillary Clinton. But the thing is that this is dangerous. If you like your First Amendment and you want to keep your First Amendment, you better pay attention to what's going on right now. And and uh, when you hear the thing about the fake news, 
look where it's coming from okay if you you know th th this is almost a kim this is almost a kim to if you had some big agribusiness and they were surrounded by a lot of uh, organic farmers and the big agribusiness was saying oh yo you you can't trust eating any of the apples from their orchards because they might be dangerous you know without really giving you any evidence to the effect but just trying to scare the customers and maybe get the customers to talk to call their congressmen and make a law against organic farmers okay this is this is trying to stifle the competition and that is the only motivation if there's so much fake news why wasn't it being dealt with before the election huh i mean it must have been going on for quite some time why was it only after the election that the media suddenly goes, Whoa, there's fake news. Oh my gosh. Because their is fake. This is Ozzy Skateboard, and you're listening.